Hi everyone, very good evening guys. I hope I'm audible and visible to all of you. So let's begin with this session, which I'm sure everyone has been looking forward to, including myself. I'll just quickly brief you about what exactly we are going to do in these two days, that is today and tomorrow. So we have a similar session tomorrow also at 4 o'clock. So for these two days, we are going to focus on pathology. So we just had a similar rapid review session on the YouTube channel a few days back before the FMG exam. So I've tried not to be repetitive so that we don't cover the same things over and over again. So I've decided that today's class, we are going to focus on a high yielding note on the general path part because we did not revise it at that point of time. So all the general, point, uh, general pathology images, tables, high yielding points that we have, we are going to discuss those. And don't worry about the PDF because like always, I will share the annotated PDF after the class. So right now, just focus on getting all the concepts right and finishing off in a rapid manner and when I said rapid obviously we are going to uh, you might feel that the session is at a higher pace only because we have an exam coming up and we have loads to cover so yes uh, I hope everyone would be able to keep up the pace at the same time we should be able to understand also right so yes let's get going right away without any delay we'll start with question number one and go ahead with this topic first so there's a four-year-old boy who's gone to the physician because of a large painful boil on his left knee. So he's been bought by his mother. He has a history of repeated infections with candida, staphylococcus. Since the age of 14 months, repeated infections are occurring. There's an abnormal test that is shown with nitro blue tetrazoleum reduction test. Cultures of the fluid from the boil show staph aureus. So which of the following defense mechanisms is most likely to be the present in the patient? Amazing. Most of you have got it right. NADPH oxygen days and you've told me the disease is CGD. What was the catch point over here? There were repeated infections with some infections called candida and staph. What is common in between them? Candida and staph both are catalase positive organisms. So first guys, we are jumping onto a little bit of microbiology and all of you are going to tell me what are all the catalase, because it's going to be an integrated session, so we should quickly revise what are all the catalase positive organisms. So I hope you remember the mnemonic for catalase, cats. Cats always keep running around, you need a lot of space for them. So when we are talking about cats, we say space being made. So quickly, and one advice for you, in this last one month approx that you have for the exam. Whenever you're revising any mnemonics, try to make out some correlation between the words. Otherwise, all the A, B, C, D in the exam pretty much sounds the same, right? So quickly, we'll go ahead with it. S and P, we have all the pigment wala organisms. Means S is for Staph aureus. What is the pigment of Staph aureus? Pigment of Staph aureus is a golden color pigment that we have. Similarly, S is for Ceratia. Ceratia is very, Ceratia has double R. So what pigment does it have? It has a red color pigment. P is for what? P is for Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas is very famous for the blue-green color pigment. So first we've got all the pigment-related organisms, right? Next we are going to pick up all the fungal organisms. So which are the fungal organisms which are catalase positive? We have Aspergillus, we have Candida, which was there in your question, and Cryptococcus also. So all the fungal organisms done. Next, I pick up an entire family, which is the Enterobacteraceae family. So E. coli, Enterobacter, all of those are going to come into place. Yes, all the Enterobacteraceae ones. Space being made. So B and M. B is the deadly, deadly one that is Bacillus anthracis. And M is the India ka favorite, that is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Also Micrococcus, but that you can ignore. So yes, having said that, quick revision. First the, the pigment ones, then the fungal ones, then Enterobacteraceae, Bacillus anthracis and MTB. So whenever you get a question that you're getting too many of these organisms, like you had over here, Candida and Staph, means catalase positive. We are thinking of a disease called CGD. There was one more hint over here, that is nitro blue tetrazoleum. So what are we going to do? Now we are going to sit and make a table of all the inflammatory disorders in five minutes, a very rapid review of all the LAD and related disorders. Yes, everyone up for it? Let's first talk about all the defects, okay? So let me start with the first one that is LAD 1, 2 and 3. First we'll do what is the defect? So where you write 1 and then you write 2 and the way you write 3, that is your mnemonic for the defect. So quick revision, perfect. For LAD1, see how do you write 1? The way you write 1 is I, so means integrin. There's going to be an integrin defect. The way you write I, that is integrin beta 2 defect. 
What is the problem in lab 2? You're going to flip the 2. What will you get on flipping the 2? We will get an S. So what is the defect? C. Allen Lewy X defect. And when you write 3, you have a 3 defect. That is firm T3 defect. Easy for everyone. 1 for 1, 2 for 2, 3 for 3. That is how you've learned the defects. Now you need to know what are the extra points that they are going to have. So in LAD 1, you will always get a history of a delay in the umbilical cord shedding. Very, very classical one, yes? Next one. Okay, is there anyone else who's facing any issues with the volume? Is that the case with anyone else? If yes, let me know. We can look into it. If not, then you just need to refresh the screen once and I think it will be sorted. Okay, having said that, so LAD1 is a problem in the umbilical cord separation. LAD2 is a Bombay blood group. Quickly tell me guys, what is a Bombay blood group? How will the question come to me? Whenever they are wanting to tell me about a Bombay blood group, it's a blood group in which there are no antigens at all. A antigen, B antigen, H antigen. All the antigens are missing and when all the antigens are missing, all the antibodies are going to be present. So A, B and H antibodies are going to be present. So if at all they don't want to give you the exact word Bombay blood group, they'll say there's a person who has no antigens on the RBCs and have all the antibodies present in the blood. That's a classical history for Bombay blood group. That is associated with LAD2. Coming to LAD3, there's a bleeding history given. Now I want to tell you a word of caution because in the exam what happens, all of us are so excited when we read the word umbilical cord that we forget to read what has happened to the umbilical cord. If they say the umbilical cord did not shed off, did not fall off, that is LAD1. But if I say there's umbilical cord bleeding, any bleeding will become LAD3. So don't just jump to your answer with umbilical cord alone. What is happening to the umbilical cord? That is very, very important, okay? So the three LADs are done. Now we move on to the next, Brutons. Do you guys remember Bruton was all BBB? What is BBB? Means Bruton is going to occur more commonly in boys. Bruton is going to be a B cell problem and Bruton is going to be a BTK gene defect. That is what you have. So Bruton, boys, B cell, BTK gene. As a result of which, why is the patient having infections? What is hypogamma globulinemia? Basically means that the IgG levels, IgG levels are going to be decreased. Everyone's okay with that? Yes. So BBB, you have that in the paper. That is going to be the Bruton's hypogamma globulinemia. Dr. Dark Knight, yes. Factor 13 deficiency also causes umbilical cord bleeding. You are perfectly correct on that. Coming on to the next one, Shediac Higashi. Shediac you will learn from the mnemonic Shediac. If you see, and after this I'm going to make you practice some questions also. So you're quickly revising and then you'll do some questions. What is Shediac? The way you write Shediac is how you will be getting a question on it. So first and foremost, what is C? CNS. The mother will say that my kid is not doing well in school, the grades are not good, the milestones are not uh, developed, delay in milestones, all neurological CNS problems mentioned. Next, the mother will say that my child is having a lot of bleeding, HE4, hemorrhage is also going to be there. Then she will also say that my child keeps having a lot of infections, his immunity is very low. Why? Why is the mother saying all this, that the child is having neurological and platelet problem and immunity problem because there's a problem in lysosomes. List gene, lysosome is present from head to toe everywhere in the body. So if lysosome has a problem, then every organ of the body ends up having a problem. What is A? A for albinism. The mother's going to, or you'll be able to see in the child only. The child will have silver color hair, silver color eyebrows. So there's hypopigmentation, albinism. And coming to the pathology, what is K? I'm going to show you a picture. K, we are going to change a little. It is going to show you the coarse granules. Can you all see these broad, broad, thick granules that are present in the cytoplasm? Yes, having said that, so Shediac mnemonic is going to be your take home message from the word Shediac. And why are so many things getting affected? Because there's a lysosomal issue over here. Coming to the last one, that is CGD, that was your question over here, chronic granulomatous disease. What was the answer? What is the problem that happens? NADPH oxidase is the problem that happens. Why did I highlight NADPH oxidase? Pick up PH and OX means what is the gene that is defective? The FOX gene is going to be defective. So NADPH oxidase, yes. And what are the complications? What problems will the person have? Like you said, that all that mnemonic we did, all the catalase positive organisms. Now comes the most important thing and everyone in case by now you have started feeling exhausted from this table, time to become alert once again. 
we are expecting a question on these tests. What are the tests of chronic granulomatous disease? How many alphabets does CGD have? C, G and D, three alphabets. The test, N, B, T, three alphabets. D, H, R, three alphabets. All these three, three letter things are gonna come together. Remember, N, B, T is the screening test. NBT is the screening test and DHR, D for D, DHR is the diagnostic test. DHR will be the diagnostic, the final, final test and NBT will be the screening test. Coming back to your question, here you had a classical case given to you where they said there is nitro blue tetrazoleum reduction test that was having a problem, means you were in CGD, means you had a deficiency of NADPH oxidase. The next question could come to you that after this, what is the confirmatory test that you will do? The confirmatory test, diagnostic test that I will do will be the DHR test. I hope this table guys, I hope it is clear to everyone. This is going to be your last minute flashcard revision for all the inflammation related disorders. I hope you are ready for a question based on this table. Yes, there's a 10 year old child who's presented with repeated bleeding episodes with delayed milestones as well as hypopigmentation. Peripheral smear has been shown in front of you. What is your likely diagnosis? Yes, tell me guys, there's bleeding as I can see. There is delayed milestones, CNS problem. Bleeding hai to hemorrhage problem. Hypopigmentation means there is albinism. The photo is showing me lots of granules, coarse granules. It's a case of Shediac Higashi that they have mentioned. Means lysosome problem. Lysosome problem means phagolysosome. All that is going to be problematic. Means there is a problem in phagocytosis. Quickly tell me the other options. In case there would have been a problem in integrins, what will your answer become? Integrins wala problem kya hai? For those who can't see clearly, guys, you just need to increase the resolution of the video in which you are watching. That is all that you need to do. So yes, what is the I? I for LAD1. If there would have been a problem in integrins, it would have been LAD1. If it would have been a problem in two selectins, that is you would have called it LAD2. And if there is a problem in opsonization, what is that? Which opsonin? IgG. Which opsonin are we talking about? That is going to be Bruton's hypogamma globulinemia. If there would have been a problem in that, then Bruton's IgG is the most important opsonin. Everyone remembers. So basically always you will get these four options. You just need to pick up what buzzword is written and that buzzword you will identify with the help of this particular uh, table over here. Yes, I hope everyone's okay with this. Can we move forward? Let's move on to a very quick question which is just like a confidence booster that I've got for all of you. What is that question guys? Yes, let me know. Myelin figures are derived from, I think, easy, this I've just got essay time pass confidence boosting but it's very very important that is myelin figures all time favorite yes they are derived from cell membrane so a quick one minute review what will they ask me about myelin figures firstly they will ask me this microscope everyone knows by now that the black and white microscope is going to be the electron microscope and I will see something like this round 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 that is going around and that is a myelin figure so what is it made up of these two questions you need to tell me it is made up of majority of the times phospholipids major major composition is phospholipids and a tiny little tad bit of calcium is there okay so if you have an option of having selecting both select both but if you have to select one you will pick up phospholipids that is why when I asked you this question what is it derived from predominantly phospholipids and phospholipids are present in the cell membrane cell membrane has phospholipid bilayer so I selected indirectly cell membrane right next they will ask you which injury again a confusion out here is it in reversible cell injury or irreversible cell injury or both of course your answer again becomes both what's the difference it starts forming in reversible cell injury and increases in irreversible cell injury which means what guys reversible may if you have for example five five uh, myelin figures Irreversible may you're gonna have 50, just a random number I'm telling you, okay? So in reversible if you have 5, in irreversible you'll have 50 figures. So basically you will have myelin figures in both. So your best answer will always be both. Okay, this was a quick, quick, just a question which I wanted to put up to you. Next, what are we going to revise? All the different images that you have with regarding to this question. So this is a very, very super simple question which I'm going to teach you after which I'll ask you one update. Pehle to tell me the most important answer for this. 
There's a 61-year-old classical female with left-sided chest pain radiating to all the classical areas. The pain has increased severely over 40 minutes. She's rushed to the hospitals. Cardiac enzymes are elevated. The patient is admitted and started on therapy. However, on the fifth day, the patient collapses and dies. Which kind of necrosis? Be very honest with your hand on your heart. Did you guys read whatever I was reading? Or did you go by your favorite retrospective and say that the necrosis that we see in the heart is always and always going to be coagulative necrosis, which is an amazing thing. In the exam also, you have to go ahead and you have to look at the retrospective, but doesn't mean that you don't quickly look at all the other points in the question. Don't do that mistake. Even if you're like super confident, just look through the question once in 10, 15 seconds, okay? But yeah, over here, every time the necrosis in the heart, and this is a classical case of MI, you will mark coagulative. Now, what is the update that I wanted to ask you? Over here, there was a line. Cardiac enzymes are elevated. Can you tell me one thing that... Um, Cardiac enzymes, okay, Dr. Dark Knight, it's not 24 hours. They say that on the fifth day of observation, the patient has died. Five days after chest pain. So you've done your autopsy after five days of the heart attack. Of course, till then, coagulative necrosis will come up, right? Having said that, what was the update? What is the earliest cardiac enzyme? What is the earliest cardiac enzyme that comes in the blood? What is the update? The best is troponin, I agree, but troponin is not the earliest. Listen to my question carefully. Guys, you are right. Troponin, I, is the best one. But yes, the update says, perfect. Even something before myoglobin. Heart fatty acid binding protein. The earliest is heart fatty acid binding protein although no one really uses it much in practice but definitely this is something that would come to you in your question heart fatty acid binding protein is very very important there are two tomorrow i'm going to teach you because tomorrow is going to be a systemic day there are two of these fatty acid binding proteins there is one called liver fatty acid binding protein also which you see in hepatic adenomas tomorrow i'll be teaching you hepatic adenomas we'll do the liver part over there right now i'm telling you heart fatty acid binding protein is the earliest cardiac enzyme in myocardial infarction coming back this is a classical case of coagulative necrosis which means you quickly have to revise with me all the different images, all five, six images of necrosis because there will be questions around it. The first image that you have over here is the very famous coagulative necrosis and this is a specimen that has been taken from the kidney, again a solid organ. So kidney or the liver or the heart, these kind of solid organs given, I always blindly mark coagulative necrosis. And what is the image that I will see in pathology? These pink, pink color random bodies which are looking like a ghost. Very good guys. These are known as ghost cells. Quickly tell me now, where else in pathology do you see ghost cells? Ghost cells are number one seen in coagulative necrosis. Tell me a dermatology condition in which you see ghost cells. Which dermatology tumor? There's a hair follicle wala tumor that you have in dermatology. That is pilomatrixoma. Pilomatrixoma also shows you ghost cells. Just two ghost cells you have to learn in the entire path. Now when there are so many ghosts, this picture is full of ghosts, very scary place this is. Can I call it a graveyard? Can I call it tombstone? Is this also known as the tombstone appearance? So many ghosts, it's a full graveyard. Tombstone appearance. Now tell me one thing. Where all in pathology do you see tombstone appearance? Number one, you see it in coagulative necrosis. Again, the second one is a dermatology condition. Where do you see row of tombstone appearance? Amazing. Pemphigus vulgaris shows you the row of tombstone appearance. Super good, guys. You've been able to correlate from everywhere. That is amazing. So this is the entire story of coagulative. Coming back to coagulative, ghost cells and tombstone. Lots of ghosts, lots of graveyards over here. Now coming to everyone's favorite. What do you see in the brain? So you get a history of stroke or a transient ischemic attack. TIA, a stroke ka history hoga. You are definitely going to see something liquidy happening over here. So you are going to call Call it colliquative necrosis. Yes, colliquative. Anything uh, like brain, stroke, remember colliquative. The third one I don't want to ask you because living in our country, I think even the common population knows that anything that looks like cheese is going to be caseous necrosis. And if we are talking about caseous necrosis, it's suspected to be a case of TB, but what other than TB? There's a fungus which is almost, almost similar to TB. What is that fungus which can show you? 
histoplasmosis everything about histoplasma is almost like tb do you guys remember in our last session that we had where i was discussing all the fungal organisms i told you that histoplasma is just a lost cousin brother of tb the clinical symptoms the necrosis everything of histoplasma is similar to tuberculosis yes okay we're not over one two more necrosis left what is this as soon as you see the yellow color tissue you know i'm talking about fat they'll be talking about fat necrosis and fatty tissues is what the answer will be either they'll give me a history of breast or they'll give me a history of omentum they will give me some or the other history of a fatty fatty organ but how will i analyze that there is some kind of necrosis happening i will look at these white areas we will look at these very classical chalky white areas that are coming up all these chalky white areas are indicative of calcium they are indicative of calcium that is how i identify fat necrosis yes coming to the last one where i expect a question this time in medicine also what is this necrosis firstly it's a blood vessel everyone can identify it's a blood vessel obviously and in a blood vessel i see lots of pink pink color material amazing fibrinoid necrosis and what are the things which show you fibrinoid necrosis all three alphabet things show you fibrinoid for example polyarthritis nodosa for example sle rheumatic heart disease malignant hypertension htn so all three alphabet things in pathology and medicine show you fibrinoid necrosis where will i get a question most expected question is out of these on polyarthritis nodosa and there are two set questions on polyarthritis nodosa number 1 which is the circulation that it does not involve it can involve the kidney it can involve the git it can involve every organ of the body but one circulation that it does not involve p is not for p pan will not involve the pulmonary circulation pan will not involve the pulmonary circulation so p is not for p and second is a virology question which viral marker is it associated with it is associated with hbsag so usually when you get this kind of a picture of a blood vessel they will give you a starting sentence of there's a 30 year old female who's hbsag positive hbsag nahi likhna they don't want to write it what is the other name for this antigen the australia antigen so they'll write there's a female who's positive for australia antigen either ways you know that your answer is Pan, right okay so on the basis of all these everyone confident about quick revision of necrosis all pictures of necrosis done jaldi se give me an answer to another question which seems very very simple now there's a 45 year old female who complains of being hit on the chest with a football so there's definitely a history of trauma that is present while passing by a garden 4 weeks back initially there was tenderness there was swelling but over the years it has subsided now she notices a lump which is firm to hard in consistency and shows you the presence of calcific deposits classical as soon as i saw trauma to the breast and i saw that this is going to be a question on all necrosis breast is a fatty organ and fatty organ will show you fat necrosis but from your clinical point of view in a 45 year old female where radiology is showing you calcification and the swelling is very very firm to hard you should have kept a clinical impression of cancer also right now i will not think so much about it because all my options are based on necrosis but a female with a hard lump and calcium on radiology cancer should be there in mind but yes over here there's a classical trauma history present either ways i will do a biopsy and obviously confirm it out okay someone had asked me in between which hypertension was fibrinoid fibrinoid is seen in malignant hypertension not a very common feature of benign it is seen in malignant hypertension yes everyone's okay now i have to discuss the next question which is the celebrity question of telegram because every week i have to answer this because everyone asks me this question so often celebrity question quickly give me the answer the following gel electrophoresis pattern that you see in patient b is what Yes as soon as you start reading in excitement you mark apoptosis but the correct answer is both that's why i say it's a celebrity question so quickly quickly two three classical questions ye kaun sa technique hai question number 1 this is a technique called gel electrophoresis next question what are patient a b and c patient a his dna is totally normal totally intact this is a normal person very good patient b i can see steps i can see step ladder so here we have 
step ladder appearance and in patient C the DNA has smudged out as if ink has smudged out a smear has formed so this is known as the smearing pattern so guys tell me something where do you see step ladder both so if you had to select one even I would have selected apoptosis as the best answer I would have selected apoptosis but actually this is not a specific thing neither of them are specific like in smearing I will select necrosis always but again neither of them are specific both are seen in both that is how I have learnt it both the patterns are seen in both the cell deaths but if I have to select one then step ladder is seen in apoptosis more commonly smearing is seen in necrosis more commonly the question that we are expecting next is why is there a step ladder pattern why is this DNA broken exactly in these steps like this any reason that is there so please remember that specially in apoptosis there is an enzyme called N endonuclease there is an enzyme called endonuclease yes someone asking me smearing also yes if you read the advanced books of pathology smearing is also non-specific and can also be seen in both the cell deaths none of these are specific things okay yes there are something called endonucleases so nuclease so we understand that the DNA is going to be broken down but what is endonuclease endonuclease has a rule it has a principle in life that I will break after every 180 base pairs break the DNA 180 break 180 break 180 break so basically it's dealing after every 180 base pairs right that is why you're getting step 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 everyone's understood such a simple thing basically what have I taught you 180 break 180 break 180 break this such a simple thing has been given such a complicated name that is internucleosomal cleavage internucleosomal cleavage so that's the that's the beauty of pathology to a very simple thing they'll give a really fancy complicated name that are we connected back guys please do let me know yes okay finally so if we have an option of selecting both for both we will always go ahead with both right okay so fingers crossed I hope the session can survive the rapid review that we have our internet can survive that also okay moving on to the next question which is also something which students tend to confuse a lot with so I have to have to discuss this a quick review of this question please it has come in your previous year papers earlier so tell me guys here you have a 42 year old man who undergoes a liver biopsy so there's something to do with liver that has come up to know the grading and staging of hepatitis C virus infection the biopsy reveals swollen hepatocytes and moderate lobular inflammatory activity arrow identifies an acidophilic body that has been shown which of the following best identifies or accounts for this I'm getting an option which is most of you telling me okay most of you are telling me it is B but then some of you are giving me the right answer but the wrong name you are also calling it Mallory hyaline bodies exactly why I got you this question see as soon as we come to a question on liver in everyone's mind only two bodies come and I'm first going to tell you those two bodies and then come back to this question remember for councilman bodies you will think of most commonly hepatitis C when I say hepatitis C basically I want to say some kind of viral hepatitis some kind of viral hepatitis is what I want to elaborate and most commonly see so councilman bodies are going to be seen in HCV which was your case over here and what is councilman bodies they are nothing but a kind of apoptotic bodies so over here the answer was apoptosis on the other hand Mallory hyaline bodies now they are not known as Mallory hyaline now they are known as Mallory denk bodies please remember Mallory denk bodies are seen in a lot of conditions but most commonly seen in alcoholic liver disease they are most commonly seen in alcoholic liver disease and they are made up of previous year question last INICET had it what are they made up of intermediate filament which intermediate filament cytokeratin 8 and 18 cytokeratin 8 and 18 so did you look at option number one in your question option number one was aggregation of intermediate filament proteins that was given to confuse you but you don't have to get confused because if you had a classical hepatitis C virus C means you were thinking of councilman bodies and for councilman bodies you had 
to pick up apoptosis only. If it would have been an alcoholism wala case, you would have thought of malary hyaline and from malary hyaline you would have thought of intermediate filament proteins and which intermediate filament? Very important, cytokeratin 8, 18, this is their all time favorite question, CK 8 and 18 for malary hyaline or denk bodies. Okay, so this is done. Now we've done MCQs, we've done images, it's time to come back to another table. All of you know the importance of this table. You know we can't move forward without revising it. This table is going to help you in the entire path over and over again. Yes, so we have to go ahead with this, right? Okay, so firstly someone asked me why is there no coagulative necrosis in the brain? Any organ which has a lot of enzymes, like a brain has a lot of enzymes, pancreas have a lot of enzymes, any organ with a lot of enzymes will always liquefy. That is the reason that brain has liquefactive necrosis. Okay. So having said that, yes, everyone's favorite topic, mera bhi favorite topic and every time I make you read this, no matter which exam any student is going ahead for, so yes, you have to revise it one last time with me over here. Okay, so having said that, melanin, melanin ke liye for NEAT PG guys, we have four enzymes or four stains which are very, very important and what are those four stains? First and foremost, M for M, when you're talking about melanin, Mason Fontana, remember Mason Fontana, not Mason trichrome. Mason trichrome, I'll come later. Mason tanning, tanning of the skin, wala Mason Fontana. Next, small stain. Small stain is going to be mole. Mole is going to again be melanin. So, small is also for melanin. Which IHC is very, very important? HMB45 is very, very important. And which enzyme? All of you know that what is the precursor of melanin? DOPA is the precursor of melanin. So, DOPA oxidase is going to be the enzyme. So, all these things have something to do with melanin, okay? M for Mason Fontana, tanning of the skin, small means mole, melanin, HMB45, M for melanin, DOPA is the precursor of melanin. All these pictures also I will show you, abhi ke liye we are going to be only and only focusing on learning this table first, then we will do a rapid review of all the all the pictures that we have. Coming on to the next, what is hemosidrin? Guys, hemosidrin means we have iron. Iron means the stain is going to be always pearls or Prussian blue. So you might always feel that no direct question comes from this table. Actually, there is no direct question that comes from this table. But this is anything of iron. If they give you a case of hemosiderosis, they give you a case of hemochromatosis, anything to do with iron will come and the stain will come. Sideroblastic anemia, any iron related etiology and you mark pearls or Prussian blue. Coming to the next, what is lipofuscin? Old age, old age wala pigment. What is lipofuscin? Lipofuscin is a perinuclear pigment which is going to occur in old age, senile age. So you always get that 83 year old man and that is going to have a perinuclear pigment. Because you have the word lipo and fuscin, you will tell me the stains. Lipo matlab oil, lipid, oil red O and when I say fuscin, fast. What fast? Acid fast. It is also ZN stain positive. Amazing. So, lipo for oil red O, fast for acid fast, ZN stain positive. An 83 year old person with a perinuclear pigment, lipofuscin means aging wala pigment. Coming to the next, this everyone knows, lipid, I'm not going to repeat, very, very simple. Lipid is oil red O and Sudan black B. You've read it a million times. Let's go ahead with it. This is something that students ask me often. Glycogen storage disease is glycogen. What is the stain for glycogen? It is pass positive and this word everyone is always confused with. Diastase sensitive. And I'm now going to make a list for all of you so that everywhere in pathology you don't have a problem. What is diastase sensitive and what is not? So, se sunna. someone asked me, can uh, lipofuscin be there in young people also? Yes, don't we have premature aging conditions, progeria and premature aging conditions or someone who's had a lot of wear and tear early on only? Of course, that person can have lipofuscin. So, not a lipofuscin won't be seen at all in a 20, 30 year old person. Kind of lifestyle that we have, wear and tear and free radicals that we have, we might be having lipofuscin in us also. What we are studying is obviously the most common scenario, right? Okay, having said that, now coming back, when I talk about pass positive, there are two situations that are going to be there. One is pass positive diastase sensitive, one is diastase resistant. Remember, only and only glycogen is diastase sensitive. After that, whatever is mentioned, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, diastase resistant. They mentioned basement membrane, they mentioned amyloid, they mentioned 
fungus or they mention Whipple's disease, no matter what else may be mentioned in past positivity, everything becomes diastase resistant after that. Only glycogen is going to be diastase sensitive. That is the rule that we keep over here, right? Finally, coming to calcium and copper. Calcium ke liye, the mnemonic is only going to be calcium and that is going to be the way you write calcium. So K for COSA, so von COSA is one stain. K for calcine, so calcine is the other stain and AL for alizarin red S. COSA, calcine, alizarin red S. These stains are also done. Coming to the last one that is copper, that's the favorite movie RRR. The favorite movie RRR, copper ends with an R and rhodanine and rubianic acid are going to begin with R. Copper, rhodanine, rubianic acid. Taking you a little bit into microbiology, guys, there will be two stains that you will have. One is known as rhodanine and one is known as rhodamine. Remember, rhodanine is what I've written over here for copper because rhodamine is a stain for mycobacterium TB. It's a fluorescent stain. It's a fluorescent stain. So remember M, rhodamine over here that you have is going to be for mycobacterium TB. No confusion over there. Rhodanine is for copper. You've done the quick table, everyone. This is your next flashcard table of the day. You've done the table. Now quickly revise all these pictures with me. That's the full picture of this table. So first and foremost, what you see over here, you can visualize this is a melanin stain that has been put up. And what melanin stain? The most famous melanin stain put up is Mason Fontana. Mason Fontana is very, very important. After that, if you have a case of bleeding, a history of bleeding given, a history of hemorrhage, hematoma, all that is given, you will think of iron. For iron, what is the stain? This must have been the pearls or the Prussian blue stain that is mentioned. So you can see the blue, blue color, Prussian blue. Next, they give you an 83-year-old person and you can see perinuclear pigment. See, ye jo hai, this is nucleus and around the nucleus. So this means this is a case of lipofuscin that has been given. Old person with perinuclear pigment, no other option. Next one are the ones for lipid. This you can see the fat has become red. So oil red O, very, very famous. And then last one, in this it's become black. So this is Sudan black B. Okay, next one, these are for calcium. Calcium ke liye, what was the kala? Calcium kala, kala wala kosa. Von kosa is going to be calcium. And the red one is obviously going to be alizarin red S. That is going to be red. So that is your final flashcard for all the images that you had of this table. Everyone's okay with this. Should we go on to the next question? Hope yes. Okay, so a question which we don't study too often, but is very important. So quickly read and first let me know the answer to it. A 27-year-old woman has presented with bilateral cervical uh, swellings that are gradually increasing in size over six months. I can see something marked also over here. Multiple lymph nodes are present. They are present in the cervical region with largest measuring 5.5. Similar multiple lesions are noted in the arms. FNAC is performed. Picture of the FNAC has been shown. Most of you have given me the answer D, which is Rosai Doffman. Tell me the two main points in this question which told you Rosai Doffman and not the others. Rosai Doffman disease, RDD, is also known as sinus histiocytosis with massive lymph adenopathy sinus histiocytosis with massive lymph adenopathy so first and foremost i saw massive lymph adenopathy in the question there were lots of lymph nodes and there were some large lymph nodes which were measuring five five and a half centimeters huge for a lymph node after that this picture yes this was the trick over here what is this picture there was one big cell with lot of small small chota chota cells it has eaten up what are those cells known as this is a case of emperipolesis. That's the next picture that you have to know. Cell in cell appearance. Cell in cell appearance. You will always see a big cell and that big cell has eaten a small cell. Where all do you see cell in cell appearance? Number one, the disease that you were reading, Rosai Doffman disease. Someone said giant cell. See, it could have been confused with a giant cell. But even if you were thinking of a giant cell, this means you were thinking of TB, right? You were thinking of tuberculosis. That was also there in the options. But with TB, is this the only history that you'll get? Only lymph node? There's no fever, there's no pulmonary involvement, there is no night sweats, no weight loss, nothing else has been mentioned. And in TB, do you get these kind of giant cells? Or in TB, you get a little bit of horseshoe wala, lang hands wala giant cell. So even the giant cell shape was not going well with TB. Plus over here, there's a classical involvement of 
skin also which happens in Rosa Doffman. This is a case of Rosa Doffman disease. Other than that, AIMS exam question, autoimmune hepatitis shows you empiripolesis, myelodysplastic syndrome and myeloproliferative neoplasms and a leukemia that is CLL. So mark, mark is going to show you empiripolesis. Some of the brainy students are asking me, what is the difference between empiripolesis? Very good. So if this question is coming in your mind, means you've studied in excess, which is good. Difference between empiripolesis and entosis. Both of them are cell in cell. Both of them is one big cell that has eaten up a chota wala cell. This concept is the same. Only thing is in this, in empiripolesis, the bigger cell is a macrophage. That hungry foodie cell, the bigger cell is a macrophage and that has eaten up a smaller cell. Whereas entosis is something related with any one, any big cell. The big cell could be any cell which is not a macrophage. So that big cell could be something like a hepatocyte. It has eaten a small cell. So basically when the big cell is a macrophage, it is empiripolesis. When the big cell is anyone other than a macrophage, it is entosis. But ultimately, entosis is cell in cell. Yes, it was asked one in, once in INICET. So yes, that is where all the confusion started off. I hope everyone's okay with it. Chalo, ye wala bhi ho gaya. So this was a case of Rosa Doffman showing you empiripolesis. Now since you asked me about all these giant cells, I think it's my duty that I should quickly make you revise all the giant cells also as a flashcard. And I, yes, both are viable. Dr. Manish, this is cell in cell means there is no killing in both of them. In both of them. You know, you've seen those kids who keep food in their mouth and they store it on one side of their mouth and you keep have to poking them, those tiny little two-year-old kids empiripolesis and entosis is like that. It keeps the cell in its mouth but it's not going to chew it. It's going to keep the food on one side and after some time it's going to spit out the food. It's just like that two-year-old kid. Okay, so no killing, no eating of the food is going to happen over here. Yeah, coming back, coming back to all the giant cells. Jaldi say you're going to tell me what is, what is this? Yes, so uh, what is this favorite giant cell of everyone? No wasting time in it. This is the Langhans giant cell, Langhans giant cell seen in tuberculosis. I hope no one's confusing it with a Langerhans cell ever ever in the exam because you will be very tensed in the paper which everyone is. You tend to read these words incorrectly. Langerhans is antigen presenting cell in the skin. It is not a giant cell. Okay? So this is Langhans giant cell. Coming to the next. What is the next one where you see this round round wreath like arrangement? This round round wreath like arrangement is going to be the Tutan giant cell, wreath like giant cell is a Tutan giant cell seen in lipid disorder, xanthoma. So, how will they link? See, you were asking me now, how will that table come? They will give you this giant cell. You know it is seen in xanthoma. They'll ask you what is the special stain. Now, you know xanthoma is a lipidaceous disorder. So, what is the special stain that you're going to get in Tutan giant cell? It's going to be oil red O, Sudan black B. That's how they just link things together. Coming to the favorite, and if whenever we feel these owl eyes are becoming like Gisa Pita questions and old questions, the examiner reminds you that owl eyes will stay forever. So the recent FMG exam had both the owl eyes that were given, right? So we have one owl eye which is known as the Reed Sternberg cell, one owl eye that is cytomegalovirus. How will you differentiate? Who has pink eyes? Who has blue eyes? That is what you see. So Reed Sternberg cell is very famously known for having pink color eyes and the CMV is known for having blue eyes. So remember CMV, cytomegalo. Men are usually broad built, cytomegalo. So men ka favorite color, megalo ka favorite color, men ka blue. And Reed and Sternberg, Reed and Sternberg are two female scientists. So females ka favorite color, that is going to be pink. So remember the pink eyes is Reed and Sternberg females. The megalo, the men, their um, eyes so that is going to be blue color eyes okay having said that what are the conditions obviously reed sternberg cell is most commonly noted in hodgkin's lymphoma another virology question coming up your way if i zoom into this cytomegalovirus over here guys i want to zoom into it and ask you is it only showing you the eyes is it only showing you intranuclear inclusions or is it also showing you intracytoplasmic inclusions? It is also going to show you intracytoplasmic. So that is a question that you get in virology. That cytomegalovirus is showing you intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusions. Another question in virology. Which other virus shows you both? 
other than cytomegalovirus measles also shows you both intranuclear and intracytoplasmic these are the only the only two viruses to show you that phenomenon so now i have shown you cytomegalovirus can you tell me what are the giant cells in measles that you are going to see perfect the giant cells of measles are the wardin finkelde giant cells so w ka ulta m wardin finkelde giant cells are seen in measles so you will notice now that all these giant cells have some pink pink inclusion in the center that is how you identify and what looks very similar to a wardin finkelde giant cell look at the other one the foreign body giant cell is also looking like this only all haphazard you know how to differentiate the one behind me is wardin finkelde you can see those pink pink color dots in everything whereas foreign body giant cell doesn't have those pink color dots because they will look very similar and i know all of you will say ma'am we don't have an option of zooming in in the exam i agree with this uh, majboori that you guys have but my advice to you is mug up this image as it is because this is the only picture of wardin finkelde that they have in their database so mug it up as much as you can look at it as much as you can so that you have this embedded in your memory forever okay so these were all the giant cells that you had to know and one more which you guys are going to tell me someone mentioned zank smear okay what is it zank smear mein matlab which virus and if you're talking about zank smear then which giant cell are you wanting to tell me about that is exactly what i was asking you next that if a zank smear is done then that means you are talking about a herpes virus or the herpes simplex virus are the ones you are expecting so why did i put it up in giant cells because it shows you the 3m jaldi jaldi revise the 3m with me first one giant cell means multi nucleation i can see lots and lots of nuclei inside this giant cell second all those are going to show you molding the giant cells are what they are all fitting into each other they are all Uh, embedding like pieces of clay they are pressing against each other all the nuclei are molded and lastly margination so if they write there is a giant cell with multi nucleation molding and margination you know you're talking about a zank smear done for herpes simplex virus and now that you guys are taking me into so much of virology can you tell me what are the bodies that were asked also recently in the exam these are the Leibschultz bodies. What uh, bodies are they? Leibschultz bodies are Cowdrey. What Cowdrey A? They are the Cowdrey A bodies that you have. The Leibschultz body. Yes, everyone's okay with this. So uh, someone asked me A versus B. It's Cowdrey A. So, अच्छा. So many now when we are doing so much of integration everywhere. So quickly revise this also with me. That is Cowdrey A versus Cowdrey B. So you will be like. Oh my God, ma'am! From where, from where are we going? So yes, most of the students learn it as "Hey, Bap," right? "Hey, Bap" is how they learn it. So we will also learn it like that only. What is uh, Cowdrey A going to show you? Cowdrey A is seen in herpes. That is what you said, and Cowdrey. A is also seen in yellow fever. What are the bodies that you see in yellow fever? Yellow fever show you Torre's bodies. Yellow fever is going to show you Torre's bodies. So herpes and yellow fever shows you Cowdrey A inclusions. What are seen with Cowdrey B inclusions? The most most famous actually. The most famous Cowdrey B inclusions are seen with most commonly polio they can be seen in a lot of others also but i would always suggest that you learn polio as the most important jo exam mein aayega yes adenovirus can also show is good enough but polio very very important theek hai so now can we come back to pathology part everyone's confident with all these giant cells that i wanted you to study quickly tell me a question related to the giant cells now structure marked in the arrow that has been given in the histopathological image is derived from what b cells t cells macrophages or the fusion of the epithelial cells so quick answer okay so many of you have given me a correct answer some of you are confused and the answer to that is going to be macrophages so now please remember ye to hame pata hai what was this this was that horseshoe shape arrangement that is a lang hans giant cell i just need to know how is a giant cell formed a giant cell is basically a fusion of macrophages and that is common sense see when i'm saying giant cell which inflammation am i talking about granuloma giant cell matlab granuloma granuloma is nothing but a chronic inflammation. 
inflammation. Everyone knows that, right? And what are the cells that you see in chronic inflammation? In chronic inflammation, the most important is macrophage. So everything has to be revolving around a macrophage only. The most important cell is a macrophage. When all of those are going to fuse, they are going to result this, result in these giant cells. So that is the correct answer over here. Then you are going to obviously tell me the answer to the next question also. Okay, so first tell me the answer, then I'll discuss. There's a disease characterized by fever with lymphadenopathy followed by a cat scratch. Which of the following histopathological images correspond best with the image or the scenario shown? A, B, C, D. Everything about cat scratch. Cat scratch matlab, they are telling me about a disease called Bartonella hensley. And if that is given, this means over here I have the famous stellate granuloma. Exactly. So now, if I show you all the different shapes of a granuloma that are there, we'll quickly revise. So ye wala, like you told me, stellate. Stellate granuloma is seen in two situations. Number one was the cat scratch disease. There's another one, guys, cat scratch disease and lymphogranuloma venereum. Two conditions, cat scratch, lymphogranuloma venereum. Next, the famous donut. The famous donut, if you draw a line out of the donut, you get a donut granuloma, matlab Q fever. Donut granuloma is seen in Q fever and which drug, which was the previous year question, allopurinol also shows you donut granuloma. So donut may say just Q banana, Q fever and that is the second one, allopurinol. What is this last one? The two parallel lines, which granuloma looks like these two parallel lines? The Dirk granuloma. Dirk granuloma is caused by plasmodium. Falciparum. So why are there two two pictures? This is the usual pink and blue of pathology that I keep singing about. The usual HNE pink and blue. What is this special stain for Plasmodium falciparum? Is the field stain. Field stain is the most important that you have over here. So all these are three different shapes of a granuloma. So if they give you a question something like this, that the granuloma that is seen below, you know it is a stellate granuloma. You know there are two conditions which show you, cat scratch and LGV. So your answer has to be both. Please always look out for these both wala options. Don't be in a hurry in the paper in marking A and B. Always read all four options. So this is seen in both. Similarly, they give you this as the question. The granuloma shown below is associated with what? So I can see a classical donut. I would want to mark a Q fever out of it. But I also have the drug written over here that is allopurinol. Also, Q fever is caused by which organism? It's caused by coxiella. So these are two same options. Again, my answer becomes all of the above. I hope everyone's okay with this. Achha, so now granuloma flashcard done, giant cell flashcard done. Let's see how many of you can identify the next flashcard that I'm quickly going to revise with you. Because many of you were asking me when we studied Mason Fontana, you asked me what is Mason trichrome. So here I have to discuss with you the next two images, Mason trichrome. So guys, what is the concept of this trichrome? What is the concept of this trichrome that we have? Okay, someone asked me the vector. Oh, come on. Vector of what? Coxiella. Do you remember? Coxiella is an exception. It was, we study it under the Rickettsia family where we study that all the Rickettsia have those tick and mite and uh, louse and all of those, but Coxiella doesn't have those vector because Coxiella is inhalational. Everyone remembers? So quick going back, all the family of that Rickettsia that you had, all of them had vectors, but Coxiella said, no, Coxiella is different. Coxiella said, I will go by inhalation. Next, all of these said that we will have a rash, like uh, typhus has a rash, Rocky Mountain spotted fever has a rash. All the typhoid, typhus, typhus group people have a rash. But Coxiella says that I will not have a rash. So basically Coxiella jo Q fever hai, it's all going separate, all different from the so basic concept is when your vector will bite, then only a rash will occur. When a tick will bite, then a rash will occur. When no tick will bite, no rash will occur. So in Coxiella, when there is no bite, there is no rash. That is the concept. Yes, having said that, coming back, Mason trichrome. When I say trichrome, you have to look out for three colors. I am not interested in three colors right now. I am interested in two main things. What is the color of the muscle going to be? Muscle is Mr. Muscle is going to be red and collagen is going to be blue. So, ek yaad karlo, which is red? The muscle is red. So, we learn it as Mr. And you can see everything is blue over here. Everything is blue over here. So everything is collagen. Remember this picture on the left is a keloid and this is a hypertrophic scar. Now having said that, 
look at this. Pehle I'll come to the clinical, then I'll take you back to the picture. Everyone identify if this picture will be given to you with the ear piercing kind of a history, ear piercing or some body piercing and then they'll show you this. This is a classical keloid. Keloid ka wahi do questions hai which are coming every year, every alternate year that what is the most common site of a keloid? The most common site is going to be the sternum as you can see and they ask you what is the treatment of a keloid? First line of treatment, never ever, first line may never ever do a surgery. Later on if things don't go right then you can think of surgery but first line may never ever you are going to give an intralesional injection of a steroid. Intralesional steroid injection and the steroid most commonly used is pharmacology and surgery mein padha hoga triamcinolone. We most commonly use triamcinolone, intralesional injection. Yes, these are the two most famous questions of keloid. Now you want to look at this keloid under a microscope. So here you go. You are seeing fibers which are keloid is all aggressive. Look at the lesion also of the patient. Such a big, big lesion on the ear is forming. So in pathology also everything is going to be very aggressive. Look at this. You see all big, big bundles and they are going anywhere. They are going anywhere. That is they are going in random left, right, oblique horizontal, vertical, all directions it is going in. So that is what I say, keloid clinically also goes everywhere and pathology also the keloid fibers go everywhere. Whereas hypertrophic scar, look at the lesion, the lesion is so orderly arranged, so nicely and orderly arranged because pathology also look at the fibers, the fibers are so orderly arranged. So remember if they say there are haphazard collagen fibers, if there is haphazard aggressive kind of collagen, it's keloid. If they say there is orderly collagen, then you're going to go ahead with hypertrophic scar. Someone asked me how to differentiate Prussian blue from Mason trichrome. Guys, none of these stains will ever be given to you as a spotter. There will always be some element of a history. So if they want you to pick up collagen, they will give you some injury or some clinical picture like a keloid or a hypertrophic scar. If they want you to pick up iron, Prussian blue, they'll give you some bleeding, hemorrhage, hematoma, that kind of a history. So nothing is going to come as a spotter like that. No one expects you to give you just a blue color and then you should imagine what that blue color is. That that is not how mean the examiner is. Thoda bahut examiner is mean, but not that mean also. Okay, having said that, yeah, a uh, next question which I was expecting from all of you, which everyone has already asked me, is that uh, what is the type of collagen that we are talking about over here? What is the type of collagen? So remember, initially the type of collagen, initially the type of collagen is going to be type 3 and in the end the collagen is going to become type one. So now there was a question in your previous year that at the end, at the end obviously type 1 collagen becomes more, the predominant one is type 1 and then the less predominant one is type 3. So kya ratio hota hai? It is 4 is to 1. So type 1 collagen, 1 is the strongest collagen that we have, okay? So type 1 becomes the most predominant in the end. 4 is to 1 is what the ratio is going to be. Yes, everyone's okay with it because now the next picture that I'm going to show you is something that is a question we posted, uh, you know, today morning only on the Instagram group so that all of you could revise also and come. You know, it's a must, must know table before the table it's a sp this is this will come as a spotter and let me tell you this is the only image of this disease that they have in textbooks on google on image database and in the exam and everyone knows this is the candle wax wala waxy kidney okay this is the waxy kidney so for that matter anything waxy given waxy kidney waxy spleen waxy liver waxy lungs anything waxy given is going to be amyloid anything waxy given is amyloid so amyloid pe you guys know there are two tables and two photos i know those two tables and two photos and never can i get go wrong in any of them so rather than doing too many questions directly we will do two tables and two photos and amyloidosis is over for us so yes guys all of you are going to fill up the type of amyloid for me whenever we are talking about inflammations cancers and the fevers. Someone asked me, kab tak session chalega? I know you might be a little tired, but at least abhi thoda time more, like 15, 20 minutes more, okay? Chalo. Having said that, all the inflammations and cancers and fevers, all these inflammation and fever kind of things, very good. They have the AA type of amyloid. They have AA type of amyloid. Let me tell you, they say chronic osteomyelitis, chronic pancreatitis, chronic everything, anything and everything, you will say AA except, except chronic bronchitis 
chronic bronchitis does not show you any kind of amyloid deposition very 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 important question other than this any chronicity mentioned blindly chronic and anything you will write aa but for chronic bronchitis that is going to be no kind of amyloid so all um, inflammations all cancers all fevers they show you aa what does this multiple myeloma show you everyone's favorite so we'll finish it off quickly quickly multiple myeloma is going to be al what does the l stand for l stands for light chain so you know how will they integrate the questions over here they will show you this kind of a picture they will show you this picture they will say okay this is a case of amyloid obviously this is an amyloid of the kidney along with that why would amyloid of the kidney occur so they will give you a history of multiple myeloma how will they give you a history of multiple myeloma obviously some kind of bony lytic lesion classical unka favorite history bony lytic lesion they will say multiple myeloma and they will say some kind of amyloid is getting deposited matlab al and there is a kidney in front of you so what would you want to call it i'll call it a myeloma kidney amyloid kidney that has happened because of multiple myeloma is a myeloma kidney so in this amyloid if the kidney is becoming waxy i call it myeloma kidney understood but now that amyloid comes out into the blood now all those light chains come out into the blood and what is that pass fail question that you had in your second prof benz jones protein urea classical remember pass fail question examiner had to ask you this and when the examiner was asking you this you know that my viva has not gone very very great because examiner has come down to a pass fail question so remember benz jones protein urea benz jones protein urea is nothing but light chains coming out into the urine so simple if a myeloid goes into the kidney it is myeloma kidney when the light chains come down into the urine benz jones protein urea coming back so this is done now this is the question that we had asked you this morning alzheimer's disease and hemodialysis alzheimer's disease you shows you a beta and hemodialysis shows you a beta 2 because kidneys are two and brain i wish we had more brains to crack neat pg but unfortunately we have only one brain so one brain and one beta and two kidneys and two beta that is how we always always learn it and so many times students have always always told me this that in the exam ma'am we have one brain and that also somehow stops working so that is something you might be feeling at this point of time when you have last 34 33 days in hand but don't worry that is a common feeling that everyone sitting in this class today is going to have you will feel that all of a sudden you are feeling your iq has dropped your memory has gone you have just i don't know how you've reached this stage so just keep that faith that you've reached till here this means you have a memory and you have a brain and you will get these negative dips in between where you feel that you know your brain only doesn't work and your friend's brain has some super powers and your doesn't but trust me everyone thinks the same about themselves in this time so you just have to keep going survival is the key for the last 30 days remember someone who keeps an okay mindset not getting depressed not giving up on books not giving up on studies and just taking one day at a time and surviving through those 24 hours every day that person will get a good rank in neat pg trust me having said that now we are talking about the next one so one brain one beta two kidneys two beta that is done what is for medullary carcinoma thyroid calcitonin is the medullary carcinoma thyroid ka marker so a cal for medullary carcinoma last two systemic senile old age wala amyloid and familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy nerves wala amyloid old age wala amyloid and nerves wala amyloid both of them are going to be attr someone is asking me for my brain oh i wish i could distribute it i really have no issues my neat pg is done way back so i wish i could distribute a little bit of it but that is not possible so having said that attr attr so indirectly i can give you a little bit of my brain by sharing a little bit of knowledge with you but that's the you know the least or the most that i can do at this point of time chalo having said that attr that's no coming back guys attr attr alone will not solve my question because both of them have attr remember systemic senile amyloidosis has increased quantity of attr and nerves have mutational attr okay nerves have mutational so simple 
वेरी वेरी हाई एज ओल्ड एज वेरी वेरी हाई ए टी टी आर जितना ज़्यादा एज उतना ज़्यादा ए टी टी आर वेर इज नर्व आर रिलेटेड टू म्यूटेशनल ए टी टी आर वन टेबल इज डन लेट्स गो ऑन फॉर एन अदर टेबल द नेक्स्ट टेबल इज विच ऑर्गन वेयर डज इट गेट डिपॉजिटेड जल्दी बताओ अमाइलॉइड किडनी वेयर इन द किडनी डज इट गेट डिपॉजिटेड इट गेट्स डिपॉजिटेड इन द मिजेंजियल पार्ट ऑफ द किडनी वेयर इन द हार्ट इट गेट्स डिपॉजिटेड इन सब एंडो कार्डियल रीजन सब एंडो कार्डियल वेर एवर सम ब्लड रिलेटेड थिंग्स कम ना सब एंडो सब एंडो होगा तो मतलब हार्ट में इट इज सब एंडो कार्डियल ब्लड वेसल्स विल बी सब एंडो थीलियल दैट इज वेयर अमाइलॉइड इज गोइंग टू गेट डिपॉजिटेड सो ऑल सब एंडो सब एंडो थिंग्स आर गोना बी देयर ओके इन द लिवर एवरी वन फेवरेट स्पेस विच द एग्जामिनर हैज टू आस्क यू एंड दैट इज द स्पेस ऑफ डिसी Yes, so space of DC. Talking about the spleen, it has red pulp and white pulp. Spleen में red pulp is known as lardaceous spleen. Lardaceous spleen. Why did I write it like that? Because you all know it is la red aceous is how we learn it. So la red aceous spleen is going to be red pulp. And sago. Sago is sabudana, white colored sabudana. So sago spleen, white colored sago sabudana is white pulp involvement. On the skin. On the skin, you pinch. and there is going to be purpura you pinch the patient and bleeding starts redness occurs so pinch purpura in git every organ becomes macro organomegaly is going to occur all organs become big and in joints all the joints can be affected but carpal tunnel syndrome ka history is their favorite so carpal tunnel syndrome means indirectly they are going to tell you something about the median nerve median nerve ke aas paas some amyloid will go and that is how it's going to get deposited now another question tell me something uh, all the organs are going to increase in size be it the kidney or the heart or the lung or the liver all the organs increase in size but in later stages in later stages one organ decreases in size and that is the kidney so look at my word because a lot of you come back to me with screenshots later that ma'am you had told us kidney decreases in size but in medicine we have written that kidney also increases so i am also saying the same everything increases in size but in later cases advanced stages the kidney can decrease in size and that is a question that has been asked in the previous year which is the only organ that can show shrinkage with amyloid and that is kidney so the two tables are done for us now two photos are left one photo to humne kar liya anything waxy waxy is going to be a myeloid now comes the microscopic picture and your favorite most stain kaun sa wala stain congo red stain now remember congo red i can look at it under a light microscope or which other microscope guys polarizing microscope polarizing microscope is also what i can look at it under so under a light microscope i can see some reddish color so they like fish they called it salmon red color salmon red or salmon pink color that is the light microscope but over here ye to sabko pata hi hai this is the famous apple green birefringens that you see on a polarizing microscope so no no need for revision of that what they'll ask you is where else can you use congo red one is a myeloid one is a myeloid which every first year student also knows congo red is for amyloid but what else any any disease that can involve the brain any disease of the brain kuru's plaques kuru's plaques are something that are going to be congo red positive matlab kuru is what prion disease prion diseases are also going to be congo red positive someone asked me x ray crystallography no x ray crystallography nahi hai ye you tell me when you see a myeloid on x ray so two more things you're asking me right a myeloid when i see it on x ray crystallography so see you put the word x na so you will have to see a thing which has another alphabet you see beta pleated sheets you see beta pleated sheets so remember when you use x ray crystallography you are going to see beta pleated configuration okay you don't see this congo red congo red wala is on polarizing microscope second congo red is useful for kuru's plaques that is prion diseases okay everyone done with amyloid so rather than showing you 20 questions in a quick 10 minutes we've done amyloid ka yahi hoga matlab now the same thing is going to come up in different different questions and that's about it chalo having said that now you're going to answer a baby question for me from that baby question we'll go on to all the clinical aspects of all these diseases so tell me first tell me the incorrect match and uh, then sporadic prion yes i'm not talking about the codon and polymorphism i'm talking about the sporadic prion only 
okay someone said ma'am genetics kab aayega you say it and you get it so here you have genetics in front of you find the incorrect match with regard everyone's given me the answer incorrect match matlab the third one so my purpose of this question is two first you need to revise all of these and then you need to know the most important clinical aspects of all these four diseases because we are expecting them in the paper to sabse pehle whenever they talk about fragile x syndrome this everyone knows that the mutation or the repeat is cgg repeats i change it into how have i written it i change it into myotonic dystrophy and i will have to add a t in the center i will have to make it ctg so myotonic dystrophy ctg then i will say fredrick's ataxia friend gana ga raha hai that is how we learn it friend gana ga raha hai so g a a repeats this means these three were fine what is the wrong one the wrong one is this huntington disease because what is huntington going to do hunting is going to happen in a cage exactly hunting is going to happen in a cage so there are c a g repeats that are going to happen in the exon means all the others that i made you study fragile x was in intron myotonic intron fredrick's ataxia intron this hunting in a cage tells me huntington disease is cag repeats in the exonic region pehle to ye yaad ho gaya then now we go on to what are the clinical features of first one fragile x one one slide on each one of them what is for fragile x syndrome you remember you compare it some people compared it with amir khan from the movie pk some people compared it with captain marvel but whatever is your way of learning you need to know how is a patient of fragile x syndrome going to look like so it is going to be number 1 a long face yes other than that you have these large large ears as the next thing and you also have a large mandible basically don't just feel ke ha something something in the face don't learn like this don't learn something something in the face it is exactly what i've told you because they will give you options like does this person have a long nose does he have big eyebrows and all of that so they'll give you confuse you to the extent of that also so learn exactly how you say from pk point of view so there's a long face with a large mandible and big big protruding ears that is what is the facial part before the facial part fragile x syndrome they are meant they have mental retardation previous year neat question what is the iq of fragile x syndrome patients it's between 20 to 60 that's the iq between 20 to 60 not only that next question what is the most characteristic feature what is the most characteristic feature none of these that is not characteristic macro orchidism or large gonads that is going to be the most characteristic feature that you have i hope having said that no this is not the hackett faces that is going to come later on but abhi ke liye this is the faces that you have studied everyone's okay you want to do the diagnosis tell me what is the diagnosis of choice for fragile x syndrome it is going to be polymerase chain reaction it is going to be polymerase chain reaction okay having said that nay 20 to 60 50 to 60 also falls in the same range but it that was the exact option that was given to you in your previous year neat between 20 to 60 is going to be the range in which you will talk about it okay so pcr is the diagnosis of choice now going on to to ye fragile x syndrome humne kar liya let's talk about myotonic dystrophy what did i tell you t comes in the center t comes in the center to c tg is what we are going to think about that is myotonic dystrophy and there's a very famous uh, usmle wala like mnemonic hai which nowadays all of you are very fond of that first aid wala book i know so you know that exactly how usmle mnemonics go they take it up from the name so you guys have seen this famous famous ophthal finding yes the xmas or the christmas tree cataract if i'm talking about christmas tree i will also have to ask you where do you see the christmas tree polyp in pathology where will you see christmas tree polyp in pathology the arborizing christmas tree polyp putz jeggers perfect putz jeggers polyp is going to be the christmas tree polyp this is christmas tree cataract that you notice okay so christmas tree is going to be there other than that yes everyone knows first aid matlab kafi pad i cannot terminate grip cannot terminate grip this means the person has a very strong grip cannot terminate grip perfect having said that what is this facies which all of you were telling me these are the hatchet facies 
these are the hatchet faces basically this person has the kind of face that all of us long for the sharp features sharp jawline thin face long face that kind of face that you wanted to have all your life but sitting on neat pg and just studying you have become a little rounded faced that is what you become but what you earn for is basically the hatchet faces okay so the very long face sharp features sharp jawline vesa wala face is going to be myotonic dystrophy everyone's okay now going on to the last one friend gana ga raha hai so i see a lot of ha ha coming up so a lot of you are relating to that never mind after the exam you guys can have the sharp jawline that you want but first get a anyway when you join first year residency all your jawline is going to come up within one month you wait and watch okay fredericks at exia fredericks at exia matlab that is friend gana ga raha hai g a a is what is going to happen and ataxia means there is definitely a neurological problem that is going to be there right neurological problem is there apart from that ortho mein of course the foot abnormality very famous question pest cavis right pest cavis and scoliosis orthopedics ka fredericks ataxia famous question last one which i don't have with a picture which you are going to tell me on your own this hunting in a cage huntington's disease mein kya hota hai Korea. The other name for Huntington's disease is Korea. So there is jerky movements. Patient is going to have jerky, purposeless movements. Why is there Korea? Which nucleus of the brain is affected? Which nucleus of the brain? Caudate nucleus of the brain is affected. Caudate nucleus of the brain is going to get involved. So yes, that's the best. Actually, I didn't get you this question only to know the repeats. It was just to quickly touch upon all of these disorders because one of these, in some form or the other, is going to be expected over here. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So the next one is a picture which every time you feel up, this time it will not come, and that very session it comes. It's in front of you once again, and that is the recent I N I C E T exam question. That was the Gaucher cell. That's a picture that I wanted all of you to revise. Is pe do hi questions aenge which I quickly want to revise with you. Firstly, G for G. So it is which deficiency? It is glucose cerebrosidase deficiency. Glucose cerebrosidase deficiency. And next, what are you seeing over here? You're seeing the classical crumpled tissue paper appearance. Now the question that came in the INI CET exam, which students got a little confused with, the history that comes. Firstly, Gaucher's disease has ouch, gouch. So that's how you write it, ouch. So ouch means that these are the people who are going to come to you with bone pain. These are the people who come to you with bone pain. But the question that came in INI CET was, does it have CNS involvement? Let me tell you, yes, it can. Gaucher's disease is of two types. Gaucher's disease is of two types: type one and type two. Type one may CNS is not involved, but type two may CNS involvement can occur, and that is how the question came. There was a neurological involvement in a child, and there was this picture given to you, the beat, this uh, crumpled tissue paper appearance. They asked you the cell, or they will either ask you the name of the disease, or they will ask you the enzyme deficiency. That is. That is Gaucher's. Yes, many of the books. Someone said first it says no neurological involvement. Exactly, many medicine books also say no neurological involvement. Pick up the Bible, read Robbins. Robbins has mentioned Gaucher's is of two types, and the second part can show neurological involvement. It is mentioned, right? Okay. Having said that, let's move on to another question, and that's an integrated with hematology also. So I hope you guys can answer that as well. There's a 29-year-old male patient presenting with red plethoric face along with episodes of dizziness. The patient is found to be hypertensive on examination, intense burning sensation in hands and feet, itching following a hot water bath. CBC shows hemoglobin is going to be 21 grams. He is advised EPO testing, JAK2 testing. JAK2 mutation mila hai. What is the testing and how have you done the testing? Yes. What is your answer? Answers have stopped coming. Acha nee. Now they are coming. Very good. So there are two options that everyone's answering. Although I'm getting less answers in comparison to what I got earlier. This is the testing modality called SBPE. I'll talk about all these testing modalities. Don't worry about it. First, focus on this question. My main purpose was that I want to uh, pick up this question in front of you. So what do you have? This is a classical case of as soon as I say Jack. Two V six one seven F mutation. Everyone is going to have polycythemia vera in their mind. 
when i say polycythemia vera everyone believes rbc badhega but no polycythemia vera is an increase in rbc wbc and the platelets and that is this question is a beautiful hemat question rbcs are increasing i can see what is the hemoglobin of the person 21 grams excessively high hemoglobin next i can see the patient's face is very very red so there is a red color face along with that because of excessive rbcs the patient is also having hypertension to ye to rbc problem ho gaya too many wbcs are also there and do you know which wbcs are in excess mast cells are in excess the skin will have a lot of mast cells so imagine as soon as this person takes a hot water shower hot water comes on the skin all the mast cells will rupture this person has aquagenic pruritus very famous previous year question what is aquagenic pruritus usually you feel itchy that is why you take a bath these people will go in for a bath and come back to you saying that they are having a lot of itchiness because after hot water what is going to happen these mast cells which is source of histamine the mast cells are going to release all the histamine and the patient will have a lot of itching that is going to be there right finally platelets are also more look for example for example these are your fingers horrible hand i have drawn just imagine that this is a hand and imagine that your fingers are having too many platelets too many platelets that are clogging the circulation over there too many platelets are clogging the circulation over there so patient will say my fingers are having a lot of burning sensation have a look at this intense burning sensation in the hands and the feet that condition is known as erythromelalgia this is known as erythromelalgia so basically when they want to give you a patient of polycythemia vera a red face with hot water bath aquagenic pruritus with burning sensation means erythromelalgia polycythemia vera and having said that jak2v61f is the mutation now how do i detect it is sbpe yes having said that dr anchal i'll help you out in the end this is probably one of the last part only so let's quickly finish it off okay so what is it these are all types of what these are all types of pcr don't think pcr is all an old question you all know last year it came in the exam so first they'll ask you what is the steps of the pcr so steps of pcr are going to be d a and e that's the order they told you to arrange in it right so having said that first one denaturation denaturation means the dna is like this you want to separate the dna the dna is like double stranded you want to make it single stranded so denaturation you are going to do at 94 degrees after that the next step is going to be annealing you are going to add primers that is going to occur at 54 degrees lastly you do extension you grow and that is going to occur at 72 degree to exam mein simple puchte hain you have to do what you have to do d a e that is denaturation annealing and extension simple question ye to yahan tak to theek hai but after that they will give you this list that is when the real problem starts that what are these types of pcrs and how am i going to get a question on them so let's start one by one for each one of them i'm i've always given you one buzzword and that helps you solve all the questions right so quickly quickly tell me sanger has the g so please remember that it is the gold standard pcr it is going to be gold standard pcr next sbpe single base primer extension when you know what to target when you have a known locus when you have a known locus that is when like for example did we do a case of jack 2 v617f did you know what to target in polycythemia vera exactly 617f codon so when you knew that i have to target exactly 617f to uske liye what were you using you were using single base primer extension okay having said that now what if you have a low tumor yield low tumor yield is going to be pyro sequencing how will the question come on this i will give you a question that you have only 10% tumor cells 12% tumor cells 8% tumor cells some very less load will be given then you will be doing a pyro sequencing telling you one little update that has come in robins guys that you need to know if they mention low tumor yield and they give you pyro sequencing in the options please go and select it which pcr will you do pyro sequencing pcr karoge but what is even better than pcr if that question comes if in the options you have ngs next generation sequencing please label that if you have next generation sequencing mark that if you don't have ngs then mark pyro sequencing that's an update that you have coming to the next what is genome wide association studied what is this genome wide 
association studies right please remember whenever you want to become like this big research worker and you say that i want to uh, you know i want to uh, find out why do people have diabetes why why are we becoming the diabetic capital of the world why are people having hypertension you want to do a proper association study matlab you want to do pathology but you also like a little bit of psm you want to do association studies genome wide association studies is what you are going to do when you want to go in for research next amplicon length analysis when you dna is very lengthy kaun sa condition mein tha dna was having cgg 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 dna is lengthy 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 fragile x syndrome or any of those disorders any of those disorders myotonic dystrophy ctg ctg whenever the dna is becoming lengthy 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 that is when you are going to do amplicon length analysis and exactly some time back you guys had told me what was the diagnosis of choice for fragile x syndrome pcr now you can write which kind of pcr amplicon length pcr is what is the diagnosis of choice i hope it's being correlated well right coming back when will you do rflp kuch bhi nahi pata when you don't know anything unknown locus so simple when you know exactly where to target 617f pe target karna hai i will do single base i know what to target when i have no you know no idea on this planet patient has breast cancer i don't know why she has breast cancer there could be a thousand reasons of her having breast cancer i go ahead with rflp next who will tell me what were we doing for covid what a what a weird question asking you 3 years of everyone's life wasted and then i ask you a question what testing will you do for covid biggest joke and that is you will do yes i'm waiting for an answer means there must be something in it we don't do rt pcr we do rrt pcr we do rrt pcr right so if a, you know a layman or a general public says ke hum reverse transcriptase pcr karenge i'll agree but only reverse transcriptase is not what we do we do a real time we do a real time plus reverse transcriptase pcr you have to know in covid we are doing rrt pcr real time plus reverse transcriptase so reverse transcriptase to everyone knows that this is basically the concept is it is being done for an rna virus that is the concept of reverse transcription what is the concept of real time real time means quantitative do you remember in your covid reports you used to have that ct value and then you used to have the quantity of whether the viral load is high or the viral load is low they used to give you a quantity they used to give you a quantity because you were doing a real time pcr remember any quantity word asked i'll give you another example they say there's a case of cml philadelphia chromosome how many copies of philadelphia chromosome are there how many copies they are asking you for the quantity which pcr will you do you will do real time pcr any kind of quantity question comes to you you do a real time pcr finally there's something called cgh cgh is comparative genomic hybridization comparative genomic hybridization okay so please remember in this or when do we do this what will they say you will do this whenever you want to know gain or loss of function if you want to find out that the gene is working more or the gene is working less then we'll be doing it abhi i'm going to put up a blank slide for everyone's revision so that you know that ha huh, you have been able to gather something so what is the gold standard gold standard is sanger when you have a known locus everything is known you do single base primer extension when nothing is known totally unknown sample you do rflp when the tumor load is very very low low tumor yield, uh, yield is there you do a pyro sequencing when you want to become this research person psm and patho mix karna hai then you do gwas association studies when you have lengthy lengthy dna someone asked me you only want to do lengthy lengthy dna for cgg for fragile x no any other disease even for myotonic dystrophy even for fredrick's ataxia even for huntington's anywhere your lengthy dna comes amplicon length analysis when you want to study covid you do a combo r r t p c r you want to know the quantity of something like quantity of philadelphia chromosome you do quantitative and finally you want to know the gain of function or loss of function of some gene you do a cgh microarray someone asked me what is the definitive diagnosis of thalassemia when genetics comes into play nothing beyond it so all your menzer index and electrophoresis and everything hplc goes down the track if globin gene analysis is mentioned in the question you will mark gene genetics over everything that's the rule
okay having said that just uh, i think there is uh, this is the end with one last thing that i wanted to show you last two pictures which you anyway know and a lot of you are also writing to me about other topics so anyway we have one more session tomorrow so cancers will obviously come up tomorrow and for microbiome we have a similar session in feb because i wanted microbiome to be in feb because even if i teach it to you in january honestly you will forget it in another month so i wanted the rapid mega review of micro is going to be a single session of 2 to 2 and a half hours but it's going to be one mega review of all the flash cards of bacteria mycology so it's going to be one mega revision but i hope it will be worth it near the exam having said that yeah last two pictures that you have of the day if first one is written only to ye to puchhenge nahi karyotype what are the questions that they will ask you quickly tell me question number 1 what phase of the cell cycle do you do an arrest it never mind don't answer i will only answer this this is metaphase arrest ye sabko pata hai it is going to be a metaphase arrest yes question number 2 how is this metaphase arrest done by which chemical it is done by colchicin this also everyone knows question 3 what is the fixative that i will use over here yahan par lot of confusion occurs options given are carnoy fixative carne fixative carnes fixative they do just play around with uh, alphabets and they play around with you know the uh, the pronunciation part of it we don't have to get confused it is car noy fixative there is no doubt about it how will you learn it car for car obviously car car carry you and dekho car you hai so you have to make sure there's a yo in the paper okay there's a car noy yo not car knees and car knees and what all theek hai it's car yo so car noy fixative car noy fixative contains what it contains methanol and glacial acetic acid it is going to contain methanol and glacial acetic acid but that will be written in the paper they will ask you the composition composition is 3 is to 1 and you all know the mnemonic how to learn 3 is to 1 carnoy c is the third alphabet a is the first alphabet so carnoy matlab 3 is to 1 is how you are going to learn this theek hai having said that aage badhte this was a normal karyotype there is no abnormality in it there is no trisomy monosomy all of them are nicely in pairs it's a totally normal karyotype so what staining had been done for this which banding guys which banding has been done for this the very famous g banding the very famous g banding g basically gimsa banding gimsa is the most common banding that is done to ye to karyotype tha the next image that i've got over here which don't confuse with that one it's totally different ye kya hai this is fish the purpose of why i got fish was i wanted to compare the two because when you're doing a karyotype what is the phase as which you are causing an arrest you are causing an arrest at metaphase but when you're doing a fish you are doing at an doing an arrest at interphase interphase arrest is what is going to be done over here Is that okay? So ये पूछते हैं इसका diagnosis बताओ What is the diagnosis of this fish that is there? And for the others asking me about banding, give me टू minutes. I'm going to come to your question. बताओ What is the diagnosis over here? Yes, guys. No one want to give a diagnosis. Don't want to give a diagnosis. मन नहीं है मैम Fish हो गया बस बहुत नहीं So some trisomy. I'm very happy. No one committed. No one said trisomy ट्वेल्व trisomy सिक्सटीन एटीन बिकॉज यू विल हैव टू आस्क मी tell me the color coding at least ma'am then we will be able to tell you so now i will say that the green color has been given to chromosome 13 and then the red color has been given to chromosome 21 now tell me the diagnosis now it's super easy now it's trisomy 21 it's a case of down down syndrome so basically never ever give the diagnosis only by looking at this picture examiner will have to give you the color coding never will it come without the color coding so it's the easiest to pick up you just have to do 1 2 3 1 2 3 bas wo karna hai and you'll get your answer last thing for the day coming back to karyotyping many of you want me to analyze the banding part of it i don't know why you are having a problem it's very very simple trust me just listen to me for 2 minutes and this is going to be sorted banding ko aise do parts mein divide karo one you call as q banding q basically stands for quinacrin okay q stands for what q stands for quinacrin it sounds like a quinacrin stain q 
queen. It's the queen. So queen has to be given something very fancy in life. Queen will always demand for the crown, for something fancy. So you give her a fluorescent microscope. When you use the quinacrine stain, you are going to go ahead with the fluorescent microscope. After that, no one else is the queen in the story. After this, everyone has to be a common person in the story. Everyone will have to do with a light microscope. Means, now when they say there is something called G-banding. G-banding is what? G stands for Jimsa stain. G stands for Jimsa stain, which is the most common that I was telling you. Ab this ke liye no fancy, nothing fancy, no queen, uh, you know, uh, treatment over here. Is ke liye light microscope, theek hai. So, we use a light microscope. After that, there is something called R-banding, okay? R banding, then you guys have heard of T banding and C banding. This is what you are asking me. So, dekho, you say, I am, ma'am, I am not interested in looking at this entire chromosome. Theek hai? Mujhe nahi dekhna. I just want to look at the centromere. Whatever disease I am dealing with, that disease has a problem in the centromere. So, which banding will you do? You will do centromere banding. You will do centromere banding. Next time you come to me and say, I am not interested at looking the entire chromosome. I just want to look at the telomere part of it. I just want whatever my disease is, it's happening at the ends of the chromosome. So, I'll say, fine, go ahead with telomere banding then. So, basically, whatever is the requirement of the disease, that is going to be the answer over here. Jimsa banding was this, means the entire chromosome was visible to you. You don't want to see the entire chromosome. You just want to look at the center part, do centromere banding. You only want to look at the terminal part, do telomere banding and what is R banding? R is reverse, Jimsa ka opposite. R is reverse, that is Jimsa ka opposite, that is going to be reverse banding. So, none of these get any queen treatment, means all of them, which microscopy will you be doing it under? Light microscopy. So, simple, only the queen gets a fancy treatment of a fluorescent microscope, rest everyone, they have to be like common public, that is light microscope. What is R banding for? Dekho. Firstly, did you notice, why did you call it banding? Because your chromosomes are all dark and light. There are bands, as a bands ban right? dark band, light band, hai na? reverse may opposite hoga. Means, what was dark over here, this is a G banding. So, whatever is dark in G banding, in reverse that will become light. Whatever is light in G banding will become dark in reverse. So, basically when you want to see different, different regions within the chromosome, that is when you do this. But trust me, this, this much of detail is not going to come. They will most likely ask you question number one, which is the most common banding first. Secondly, they will ask you for which one do you use a fluorescent microscope. Ye hai hamara take home message. Other things I explained because students were asking me for but we don't need so many details. G banding and Q banding are the two main questions that are gonna come. Okay, right. So, that is the end of today's session. So, I hope you guys have two, one question which came all throughout was, will you get the PDF? Of course, you will. When have I not shared the PDF? So, nothing different. You will get the PDF and you will get it within the next half an hour only because I just, not even half an hour, I just need to convert it into a PDF and send it across. So, you will definitely get it and I hope you guys are going to join me tomorrow as well at 4 o'clock. We will be discussing the systemic path and we will be going ahead with the tumor aspect of it. So, thank you so much guys for joining in. Thank you. Study well. Thank you.